All right, everybody. So I got what I think is a really cool video today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, machining some ACM uh, panels or aluminum composite materials. You may also know them by the brand name like Max Metal or Dibond, which are really popular and used a lot in the sign industry. In this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to make a box, a uh, sign box. So we're going to mill out the uh, sides and the entire outside profile but we're also going to use a special V-bit to machine the uh, 45s that are needed to bend up the edges of the box. So I am going to show you how to do this. We're going to use a tool from Amana. It's a special V-bit made specifically for cutting ACM panels. And we're going to get started. I'm going to show you uh, what we need to do, what are the steps, and then we'll go ahead and cut it out on the CNC machine. Now, for those of you who don't know what ACM panels are, like I said, there's a couple different brands that are pretty common, Dibond, and there's another one called Max Metal. Uh, what, it, what they basically are, here's a photo that I'm using to illustrate. So it's a piece of uh, plastic in the center. It's usually a, a hard plastic, and it is laminated with two thin pieces of aluminum. Now, the aluminum could be brushed aluminum. It could be brass. It could uh, be colored aluminum, uh, such as uh, these images here. And usually you have to check the manufacturer, like these sheets here would, would be eighth inch thick, overall thickness. And usually you're looking at about 12 to 19 thousandths thickness for the aluminum. Now that's important. You wanna know what that thickness is. So the brand of material that you're gonna use, uh, if it's a, as long as it's a reputable brand, they should be telling you, what the thickness of the uh, aluminum is. Um, and you're gonna need that later when we program Vetric to cut this project. Now, if they don't tell you, you could use a pair of calipers and kind of scratch away some of the plastic and then get the tips of the calipers in there and you'll get a pretty close measurement on what that's gonna be. Now, here's an example of a box that's been folded. This is the Max Metal product. And what you're doing is you're cutting the entire profile out and you're using the uh, special V-bit to miter, to do your miters. Uh, so, and I'll illustrate that later, but this is an example of a box that's made using that material. Now you could do a lot of things, not just signage, but I've seen people make structural uh, components. I've seen people make things for hobby uh, using this material. Uh, what's nice about it is it's, uh, it's, a, it's aluminum on both sides. Uh, it's waterproof, it's durable, uh, it's good for outdoors. Uh, and as long as you, you know, do your miters correctly and you glue up your corners, I mean, it's gonna last a long, long, long time. Now, here's another photo from uh, Mana. Uh, it's showing an Amana tool and, and there's a couple types of, like I said, different materials. So this is a solid core, more like a, uh, Dibon, where this is more of a honeycomb core, uh, so it's going to be a little thicker overall, and it looks like here the aluminum is a lot thicker as well. So you're going to use uh, the, this same process no matter what, what kind of material that you're going to be cutting. Every CNC application that we do here in our shop, we turn to a mana tool for all of our cutting tools. We do this because we have a great relationship with the company. They have excellent customer service. Their quality of their tools is fantastic. They last a very, very long time. And they have thousands of SKUs with a cutting tool for just about any application that you can think of. So in this particular case, they have a whole section of their website dedicated to double edge folding V or rectangle groove bits for ACM panels. And as you can see, they've got, you know, 20 something odd uh, different choices here. They have the bits in quarter and half inch shanks, so pretty much to, no matter what size CNC machine you have, I mean, even the smaller ones will use quarter inch. And as you get into the more industrial sizes and larger machines, you have half inch capability if that's what you want. They have diameters from half to three quarter inch, and they have four different angles, 90, 108, 135, and 155, which means you could fold your ACM panels into a large variety of shapes depending on what your particular needs are. Now, the bit we're gonna use for this particular project is 45792. It's a double-edged folding V-groove, 90 degree, which will give us a 90 degree 
uh, fold, which is exactly what we want. So this is the information on that particular bit. Now, there's a couple things here. It's You may look at it and be like, oh, that's just a normal V-bit. I can get one at Lowe's or Home Depot. And when you're cutting ACM, that is not the case. You do not want a standard uh, V-bit. You do not want a bit that has, it comes to a complete uh, sharp point. And if you notice here, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm trying to find a picture that shows it. You can see from this picture here that the tip of the bit actually is flat. There's, there's a flat that's milled into it. And when you look at it from the profile, you can see that it's, that it's flat. But if you look at it from the top view, you can see it's a flat, but it's actually cut at an angle. So it's still a cutting tip uh, that spins along with the bit. It's not just a, a ground flat spot on there. Now, the reason that you want that is kind of illustrated here in this in this picture. You're going to cut your you're going to run your V bit through. You're going to cut a, a 45 degree bevel on each side, and then you're going to have this flat spot here that is not going to go all the way to the aluminum. Now the reason for that is so that when you go ahead and you make your 90 degree fold, you've got a little bit of plastic followed by the aluminum, and when you bend this side up and over, you end up with a very nice radius on the outside of your box. If it came to a point, uh, a complete point, you run the risk of cutting straight through into the aluminum, and then when you bend it, you run the risk of having a crease uh, that actually pops through on the aluminum here, and, and that's not going to work. So in order to cut ACM panels effectively, uh, you need one of these bits that has a flat in it. Now, because it has a flat in it, we have to program this into Vetric. We can't just program it in as a normal V-bit in Vetric because it's going to assume that it comes to a point. So if you do that, it's, it's, the bit isn't going to go as deep in the material as you need it to. So we have to create what's called a form tool. Now there's all the data you need is right here on the Amana Tool website. Uh, you have the overall angle, uh, you have the angle of one side, which is 45 degrees. You have the overall diameter from this edge here to this edge, which is a half inch. Uh, the important things that we need to know here are what is D1. Now D1 is the the um, diameter of the flat on the bottom. In this case, it's 90 thousandths. And then we need to know the cutting height, which is from the bottom corner of the flat to where the uh, 45 degree turns into a 90 degree on the cutting face. And that's labeled as B. And we want to know that and it's 13 64ths, which for everybody who hates fractions, that is 0 0.203125. Nice round number. Uh, but we're going to need to know that because we have to program that in when we design the form tool. So everything you need is here. Uh, it tells you your max RPM that you can run. It's two cutting flutes and your quarter inch shank. Now they're giving you a bunch of information on this bit. They're, they're going to show you exactly what types of materials you can run with this. There is actually a Vetric and um, Fusion tool file for this that you can download as well. I am not going to use that. I'm going to show you how to program this in because I think it's very valuable to know how to program in a form tool in Vetric in the event that you're using something that is custom or you're using a tool that uh, is not an Amana tool and you need to figure out how to uh, set that up in Vetric. We're going to go ahead and do this. I have my own way of doing it. Everybody may design things a little bit differently in Vetric, but I find this way pretty simple. So first thing I need to do is I know that my flat width overall is 90 thousandths. So I'm going to start a box here and I'm going to make it 0.090 by 0.090 and just put the box on the screen. <coughs> Actually, I don't need two boxes. So we'll get rid of that one. Now the next dimension I need is the overall cutting width, which is this dimension D. It's from this vertical to this vertical. And D, the diameter, is a half inch. So we're going to go ahead and make a second box that is 0.5 by 0.5 and drop that on the screen. 
Now what I need to do is I'm going to select the first box, hold the shift key and select the second box. Come over here to the align selected objects tool. I want to center the align to selection, not align to material, but align to selection. I want to center that so that the two boxes are centered. And then I want to click this one here. I want to make the bottom of the inside box even with the bottom of the larger box. So by clicking this, you'll see now they're, they share a, a common line on the bottom. <clears throat> so what I need now is I'm going to, one more dimension. I need to find the uh, dimension for capital B here, which is basically the cutting height of the bevel. And it's 1364. So fortunately, using Google, I know that 0.203125 is 1364 in a decimal. It's a nice round number. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the small square, go over here to move selected objects, make sure we're in relative mode. We're going to move it in the Y position, negative, because we want to come down. So minus 0.203125. Hit enter. So now I have all the dimensions I need from the specifications from the Amano website. So now what I'm going to do is take the draw line tool. I want to make sure that the snapping uh, buttons are selected. I'm going to go from this corner to this corner, hit the space bar, go from this corner to this corner, hit the space bar. Now I'm going to go over to the scissor tool and I'm going to just remove the middle line and that part of the box. So now you see I have the profile of that cutting tool. However, Vetric only requires half of this profile. So we're going to go back to the line tool. And if you hover over this line, uh, you'll see like a plus will come out. That, it's going to snap to the center of that line. And we're going to go straight down and it's going to do the same thing here. It's going to snap to the center. Hit the space bar. We're going to come back to our scissor tool and we're going to get rid of this half of the tool. Now we're going to hit N on the keyboard, which is node editing. And what I want to do is come up to this upper right uh, box and hover over it, hit the letter C, and then come down to the leftmost lower box and also hit the letter C. So you can see these three nodes are still selected. I'm just going to hit the delete key. And that is it. That's all that Vetric needs right now to do this. They just need this profile for that. Uh, that form tool. So it's half of the overall profile. So we're going to select that, go over to the tool pass tab and pin that. And then we'll go to our tool database. We're going to select a new form tool. So new tool from the drop down, select form tool. We're going to give it a name. I like to call them based on what they are. So this is a mana tool. Uh, 45792. So it's 45792. I do not need to make that the default for all form tools. So I'm going to uncheck that and click OK. Now it automatically calculated that the tool diameter, the large D, is a half inch because we it took half of our uh, profile that we made and uh, mirrored it, and that's the overall diameter. This particular tool has two cutting edges. We're going to create settings now. Our pass depth, we're going to leave set at, at uh, eighth of an inch because the material thickness we're doing is an eighth of an inch. So I, you could set it to more, but I just leave it at the material thickness and that seems to work. I'm going to run this at 18,000 RPM at 100 inches a minute. Whoops, uh, 100 and 100 for the plunge. And I'll just leave it set up to tool number one. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Click OK. And that is how I set up a form tool. And you'll see now in your tool library, uh, up here it shows up as Amana 45792. What I'm going to make here is pretty simple. It's going to be 10 inches tall by 12 inches wide. Uh, but I also have a one inch, I want it to be one inch thick. So I'm going to create my file a little bit bigger than I need. Since uh, I'm going to go 12 inches plus one inch on either side, that would be 14. I'll give myself a little extra room on the screen, so we'll set it to 15. 10 inches tall plus an inch on either side is 12. We'll give it an extra inch, so we'll go 13. And the die bond I'm using is an eighth inch thick. All right, so first thing we're going to do is draw the actual box size. 
that I want. So that's going to be, uh, let's see, 12 inches wide, 10 inches tall. And we'll place that on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and click the align tool and just center that. Now I need the parts that have to fold up are going to be one inch uh, tabs, I guess, that, for lack of a better word, that you can uh, extend. So what we're going to do is go from here and we're going to change this to one inch. Uh, so now I have this will actually cut with the V-bit right along this line and then this piece will fold up. So I need to do the same thing on this side. And we'll just come over here and we'll set that to one inch wide by 10 inches tall. Uh, now what I can do is simply take this uh, side here and we'll do mirror selected objects about job center and create a copy. We're going to flip it horizontal and we'll take this one and we'll flip it vertical. So now I have my four tabs and the actual box size that I need. So. What's going to happen here is I'm going to cut on the these horizontal lines. That's where the fold is going to go. So these two vertical ones and then these two horizontal lines. Uh, but then I got to come back and I got to use a different cutting tool and I got to cut around the perimeter to cut the whole thing out. So I'm, that means I'm going to need a vector that represents the entire outside of this shape. And then I'm going to need some single line vectors that go straight across here and here and go up and down. Now, right now, uh, it's, I can't use these vectors to do that because if I were to select this vector and try to cut this, it's gonna cut around the outside of this or on the line on this, which wouldn't do me any good. So what I'm gonna do is gonna use the scissor tool and I am going to cut away the lines on the sides here like this. And then what I'll end up with is one continuous vector that goes around. Now that's going to represent my final cutout or, and I'm going to cut outside that line. So now what I need to do is just add the uh, horizontal and vertical lines as separate vectors. So I'm going to go over to the line tool and just going to click this point to this point, hit the space bar, go from this point to this point, space bar from here to here space bar, and then from here to here. Now, I want these lines to be extended a little bit uh, because I'd like to start the V-bit just before this and end slightly after. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift key and select both of these lines. And I'm going to go over to the set selected object size. And right now the line is set to uh, 14 inches wide. I'm going to uncheck the link and I'm going to make this 14.5. Uh, and I want to make sure I'm anchored in the center so that it will expand in both directions. So when I click apply, you can see the line got slightly longer on both sides. So now I'm going to do the same thing on these two lines, except this time I'm going to change the height and make it 12.5 and click apply. And now you can see those lines are a little longer. So all my vectors are done to cut this. So the next thing I need to do is go to my tool pass tab. I'm going to pin it so it stays available. And I need to cut all of my uh, V grooves first on the line. So I'm going to select each one of these. And I'm going to go to profile tool path. I know the thickness of uh, the material is 0.125 inches and the thickness of the aluminum is 0 0.019 and I also want to go ahead and leave about a 64th of an inch of plastic. So when you add that up and you subtract it from 0.125 that's going to leave me with a depth of 0 0.09. So 90 thousandths. So that's how deep I'm going to cut into the material and that's going to leave me a 64th of an inch of plastic and then the aluminum thickness. So I'm going to change my tool to the form tool that we created. Click select. I want to cut, this is important, you want to make sure you're cutting on the line. Uh, we want to cut on these lines because that's where the fold is going to happen. 
I don't need to worry about any of this. I do like to add a ramp. I don't like my uh, bits, especially this one, being it's a flat tip V-bit to plunge straight into the material. And we'll give this a uh, name. We'll just call this V-bit. Uh, or, well, you know, what? we'll call it a fold toolpath. Click Calculate. So we can preview that. You can see what's going to happen. It's going to create a V-groove when you could see the flat that's in there as well. And now we're going to cut our profile. So the thing with the profile is you're using a round cutting tool and I want to make sure that I get as tight into these corners as I can. I don't want to be unrealistic and use a 16th inch diameter end mill because you'd have to run it really slow and there's a higher risk of it breaking. But an eighth inch end mill works very, very well for this and it gets just right into the corner, leaves me with a very small radius that I can easily clean up. And it just works better. So what I'm gonna do here is go to a profile toolpath. This time I'm gonna select the whole outside vector that we created. Now I'm gonna change my cut depth to 0.125, but I, am, I have a, a MDF spoil board. I'm using a vacuum table. So I wanna make sure that I'm cutting into my spoil board a little bit. I, I just wanna make sure I'm cutting all the way through this material. So I like to add 10 thousandths to it. So instead of 0.125, we're going to make it 0.135. I've got my tool selected. The, oh, actually, i got to change that. This is my V-bit, so I'm going to change this to a eighth inch uh, down cut. And I'm going to leave my settings here. I have it at 145. I'm actually going to change that to 100 and 100. I've got my pass step set to an eighth inch, which is usually one times the tool diameter. I'm going to click Apply and Select. This time, now it'll carry the settings over from the previous toolpath. So it's set to on the line for the V-bit. I wanna make sure I change that to outside the line. If I go ahead and cut on the line, it's going to mess up my uh, overall dimensions and it's gonna make these tabs uh, a little smaller. So I wanna make sure I'm cutting outside the line. Again, gonna add a ramp to this and then click calculate. It's gonna warn me that I've set my material thickness to an eighth inch and that it's gonna go deeper than that. So it wants to be sure that I have a spoil board so I don't damage the machine bed. Click OK. Now I'm gonna go ahead and preview that toolpath and you can see it cut all the way through. So if I double click this outside material, then you can see what the finished product is. Now what's cool about this, <clears throat> as you can see, because I, I also, I extended these V grooves past the tabs that I'm going to fold up, that means this edge is also beveled. So this edge and this edge is beveled. So when I fold this side up to this side, these two uh, joints will also equal a nice clean miter. So not only will I have a nice fold here, but I'll have a nice miter joint in all of the corners. And that's it. That's how we set up the toolpath for this. So we're going to take it out to the CNC. I'll show you how we cut it. And then we'll fold one up and you'll get to see the finished uh, product.